Welcome everybody to the Hot Wheels Legends Tour 2021. I am Jared Dienda and we are back and we're talking all things Hot Wheels and Hot Wheels Legends because we are searching not only US, not only Canada, but multiple different countries, 15 to be exact, where we are whittling down to just a few vehicles and one at each stop will win. No, this country? Well, look at this trophy. What's it say on there? Take a look. Tighten her up, get a focus on there. Hot Wheels Legend Australia. So we will eventually find out, source from thousands of personal custom car entries, who will be immortalized as a Hot Wheels diecast and who from Australia will be holding this trophy. While the submissions for this round may be closed, we want to ask you, does, is, is your vehicle a Hot Wheels? So you could still go to hotwheels.com slash legends for more details and find out if you have what it takes to be immortalized as a Hot Wheels diecast. Builders and fans from around the world can now register and compete to have a chance for their custom car to be immortalized as a 164th diecast. This is our second stop of the 2021 Hot Wheels Legends Tour, and we are here down under and we are brought to you by Big W. Thank you so much to Big W and a special thanks to our media partner, Street Machine. You guys submitted your cars, Australia, and we have whittled down to 10. Yes, last year was 20, now it's 10. I got enough fingers here to hold up five, 10. That is right. So the finals from this round's Hot Wheels Legends Tour stop will join the other finalists in Los Angeles in November. Hopefully we get a big enough plane where we get New Zealand, we get Australia, We'll see when we get when we'll cross that bridge or we'll go the, over that overpass when we get to it. So taking a look at my notes here, here is what's coming up. I'm really excited to be here. We got a great, great panel of judges. So we're going to talk about our previous winners, not only just back in New Zealand last week, but also previous years when we kicked off a 50 year celebration of Hot Wheels back in 2018. We're going to meet our judges. We're going to talk about our judging criteria. We're going to see four vehicles, vehicles one through four. Then we're going to move on to ah, somebody near and dear in our heart. He was part of Hot Wheels Legends virtual experience last year. Ryu Asada, a legend, and we'll get and basically get to know more about this iconic figure in the Hot Wheels family. Then we'll move on to featured submissions five through seven, our Hot Wheels design spotlight. Featured submissions eight through ten. Then we'll find out our judges' top three in ascending order. We go from three, two, one. Then we'll have our special guest, definitely synonymous with Hot Wheels, Matt Mingay. And then we find out who wins here, who holds up the trophy. Hot Wheels Legends Australia. It's right here. I'm calling you from race service in Los Angeles. And uh, yeah, it's early in the morning, but I'm ready to party. I know you guys and gals are ready to party as well. So before we meet our judges, let's dive into some Legends history and see the previous winners. As again, this all got kicked off in 2018 to celebrate 50 years of this iconic brand that is Hot Wheels. Well, back in 2018, we saw people coming out to different locations of different retailers, even going to El Segundo to the Hot Wheels headquarters. And that man right there, he's got a smile on his face because eventually he came out on top. He pilots the two Jet Z. Not only does he pilot, but Luis Rodriguez built what looks like, I mean, this looks like a fighter jet on four wheels. Two Jet Z, well, if you know engines, the two JZ is housed underneath that cockpit. Now, 2019, we were a little bit more old school. The 57 Nash Metropolitan. This tight little vehicle, I don't even know if I can fit in this thing, but with the chute, the dice on the hood, and just the young inspiration. I mean, this thing screams, absolutely screams Hot Wheels. So, as we move along down the road, literally and figuratively, 2020 things, man, you know what? Yes, we were holed up into our house, but this meant our footprint got larger because we went digital. We went across multiple different countries and we could speak to all our friends utilizing this right here, this interaction. We might be very far away, but right now we are so close and that's exactly what we did. Our footprint got larger and we eventually found out through a variety of different vehicles from Porsches, we saw classics, we saw hot rods, we saw a variety of vehicles, special guests, and it all got whittled down to our finals at Jay Leno's Garage featuring Jay Leno. We had Hot Wheels designer, special guests including Gabriel Fluffy Iglesias and Snoop D O Double G, the dog father, an absolute rock star, superstar cast. And you can see Snoop jumping with elation because Riley Stair gets the overall win. Riley Stair, you can see this thing, this 1970 Pontiac Tramzan. Trans Am, easy for me to say. I'm really excited. I love this car. Just give me the darn keys, and I'm ready to do some burnouts in it. 
So now let's fast forward to just last week. It was Hot Wheels Legends New Zealand, and this thing came out on top. So this vehicle will join the others. Like I said, the winner of this round will join that vehicle and the whole alum in the finals in November. That 73 Mazda 616 Capella built by Mark Strawbridge. Ugh. All right, you ready? You ready to meet the judges? Here we go. So our first judge, he's just down the freeway. Or I, I think he's down the freeway. He's smiling already. He's really excited. 13 years at Mattel. Total of 25 years designing toys. Hot Wheels die-cast designer. Say hello to Brandon Vituski. Brandon, what is up, man? You got a ton of Hot Wheels behind you. But right out of the gate, I just got to ask you, how is it working for just an iconic brand that is Hot Wheels? Oh, it's an absolute honor. I I love it. I've, I've loved cars, hot rods my whole life. Uh, never really grew up, so I've always been playing with toys, collecting toys and stuff like that. So working at Hot Wheels is that perfect combination of combining my passion for hot rods and toys into one place. And it's just a great group of people, great team to work on. So I'm really proud and honored to be here. Yeah, um, you yourself have four hot rods, and notably, I'm just going to put it out there, because you have a vehicle that is near and dear to the Aussie's heart. You actually own a GTO, which, down under, it's called a what? It's a Holden Monaro, so not Monero, as they might say here in the U.S., but we'll, uh, we'll say it properly. And yes, this was made into a Hot Wheels just earlier this year, so it's pretty cool. And it's a little bit hot rodded in typical Hot Wheels fashion. So, you know, we gave it the drag racing look with the exaggerated hood scoops, the side exhaust, the wheelie bars, the parachute in the back, and of course, you know, some of the details in the interior. And if any customizers want to drill it open, you might find some LS engine pieces molded into the interior as well. Wow, what a flex there, Brendan. And you, now you have, what is that? Is that a total of four or is that five vehicles? Because it says four, but is the is the GTO included in that? Um, as far as Hot Wheels made, like replicating my own cars, I mean, I have a bunch of Pontiacs. I might be Pontiac biased, yeah. but um, I have my 67 Firebird that I currently own. I have 84 Pontiac Trans Am, which I had in high school and brought to California some years ago. And then, of course, the GTO. And there is a 55 Chevy that I'm still building in my driveway, and that should be running and driving pretty soon, hopefully. And yeah. All right. So that's, All right. that's four right there. All right. Well, I mean, you might have bragging rights. You have your four Hot Wheels, but do you have one named after you? Because our next guest judge. Is Vance, look at that <laughs> smile on your face, man. I know it's a, it's a little late slash early as a, yep. again, one o'clock here locally. But I mean, I know artists and artists like you works through just any time of night, right? Yeah, I would say going to Art Center, you get in this uh, habit of staying up really late and working late. <laughs> um, Dwayne, we talk about kind of, again, the Devancinator. Where did that come yes. and, 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 and how did that come to be? And there it is as a, the Devancinator. Yeah, this, uh, this car came about. Um, I wanted to do something that was uh, kind of like that cyberpunk theme. And then, so it's got, it's got like kind of all the, the kind of modern twist on cars where it's like a, you know, like a wide body up front. And then it's got the whole, the whole rear ends like ripped off and it's all exposing all the engines and the mechanics in the back and stuff like that. And then it also really doesn't have a windshield. It's a whole, like a whole, um, you know, cover that goes over the whole, the whole body. Yeah. So like using electric, you know, electronics type stuff in there. I and, love it. Super, yeah. super creative, super creative. And I can see all the artwork and I want to get into that later in the Hot Wheels Spotlight because you've actually published a couple books about hot rods. We'll get into that in uh -huh. a little bit. But uh, so just just go on ice there, Devancinator. We'll get we'll get to you in a moment. OK. <laughs> all right. So. Uh, all right. <laughs> Moving on to our next guest judge. I know her uh, personally and she's a fantastic human being and uh, her and her and my great friend have a child together now, but uh, model and entrepreneur. Vogue cover model, Victoria's Secret Angel, Sports Illustrated swimsuit model, but she is a petrol head at heart. Her, her, her beanie says racing, and she has oil running through her veins. That is Jess Hart. Jess, how are you doing? And I got to ask right out of the gate, you're a model. I mean, you know, who, who got you into cars? I've always been into cars. It's been running in my blood since I was born, I'm sure. And then I modeled for as long as I can remember now. Um, and a few years ago, I just decided to 
follow my passion and get back into kind of what makes me um you know thrive and it was cars and ever ever since i did i've just been um on this amazing path i met james and um i'd love to get into like racing one day soon um but yeah it's my passion is cars. i love, I love it them. Yeah, I love it. I mean, you are who you're sur surrounded by, right? I mean, you got fashion, you have all these influences. Now you have your child. And um, speaking of child, um, we don't condone any sort of thievery, but uh, I'm seeing in the notes here, uh, you stole your mom's car at 14 and crashed into a tree? <laughs> uh, a few times. I didn't a crash. Few times. A few times? <laughs> I did a lot of dumb things when I was younger, but um, that's what makes me who I am today. It is. And yes, you, you are definitely... Yeah, don't, don't try that at home. No, do not try that at home. Now you're Mercedes AMG ambassador. What would be your dream car? Um, Going for a GT4. I want to start racing. Okay, I like it. All right, I like it. I like it a lot. Well, thank you for joining us, Jess Hart, our guest judge here. Again, uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Definitely uh, an icon there down under, but now living here in Los Angeles. Moving on to somebody who's trying to gun for my job because he could definitely talk the talk. He could walk the walk. He has a podcast. He is a pit specialist reporter. I'm seeing the stats here. I mean, you, you, you've won numerous awards for broadcasts of the famous Bathurst 1000. But I, I got to ask you, I mean, what, what's kind of one of the coolest events that you've ever called? Uh, Jared, that's really hard. Uh, firstly, super excited to be a part of this. I had hundreds of model cars when I was a kid, particularly Hot Wheels. I, um, I love them. So Bathurst 1000 is a big thing. I've been fortunate to go to the British Grand Prix, to MotoGP in places like uh, Italy and, and other spots. And nowadays, broadcasting kind of, I split my time between New Zealand and Australia. So you talk at the top of the show about that amazing Capella that won here in, uh, in New Zealand. Well, I've seen that car on track. And in Aussie, well, I'm looking forward to seeing what, because I'm a proud Aussie, I grew up there. I'm looking forward to seeing what our finalists are like tonight because there's a great car culture down under. We've got some unusual things down under too. You talked about the, the GDO before. Well, I've, I've driven... Uh, in, in a media sense, in a Monaro with Stephen Richards, the Athos winner. So I've got to drive one of those cars too. Very cool. That's awesome. And your your diversity runs as deep as the 10 vehicles we are actually in competition with here uh, this evening. And I'm really excited. So thank you, Rusty Greg, Rusty Russ, for joining us, man. Really excited. And awesome. our next guest, you've actually had on your podcast. So let's move on to our next guest. we got a couple Taylors in the building. This one in particular, rally car driver, currently you know from Australia, but has raced Subarus. And now, most recently, something that I think is really just on the tip of everybody's tongue electric racing so we welcome in molly taylor molly you just got back from saudi arabia you're currently in quarantine so we're excited this gives you something to do with your downtime right but if you can talk about your most recent form of racing yeah thank you for having me i'm really excited as, as rusty said to see what we've got in store and coming from my lovely hotel room um, i've just come back from saudi arabia where we had the first round of the extreme e series which is an all electric 550 horsepower electric SUV series and uh, as well as awesome racing we traveled to five remote locations that have all been affected by climate change and the real purpose behind what we're doing is to use sport as a platform to uh, take positive action against climate change and promote promote that with our racing fans as well so it's um, a really really cool thing to be a part of and heaps of fun to drive. And, and I'm going to humble brag for you. Not only did you just come back from Saudi Arabia, you're currently quarantined in Melbourne. How did, how did you do at that race, Molly? Oh, you know, we did all right. <laughs> um, we, we came away with the win. So it was yeah, even better to have the very first round of this series. Nothing like this has ever been done before. And to uh, come away with the win as well was uh, pretty surreal. So it's making my... 14 days in a hotel room, a lot more easy to digest. <laughs> you're just celebrating woo every day in those 14 days. And uh, you're part of the Nico Rosberg team. You got teammate Johan Christofferson. You have a star-studded cast, and you are part of a star-studded cast here this evening. So, Molly, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. All right, moving on down the line, our media partner. We saw him last weekend in New Zealand, or virtually in New Zealand, because he was physically in Australia, just like he is now. But uh, we say hello once again to Street, mean, Street Machine a video and event producer, Scott Taylor. Scott, um, your shirt looks a lot cleaner than last week. The ham and pea soup is not there. I really got to really hang you out there to dry on that one, literally, um, because of ham and pea soup. But you have a different backdrop. What do you got now? 
I know it's all, it's awesome. I mean, I am in the Carnage workshop at the moment. So this is our little Carnage studio where we shoot our Street Machine Carnage YouTube channel. Uh, we've got we've got our MX5 over here. It runs nines. So it's got a Barra Six shoved in it. I mean, we got Turbo Taxi over there. We got a VN Commodore up on the hoist. We got a, a nine second Volvo over there. So yeah, wow, it's uh, it's all happening here. How, how was your experience last week and then coming into here knowing what you know and again you just being the car guy and, and just the diversity of your vehicles it's a lot cheaper to own a 164th Hot Wheels die cast but how many did you own I think we talked about this last week how many did you own or do you own and, and can you remember your first one? I can't remember my first one um, I know my father-in-law has a massive collection there back at home but uh, you know, I actually talked about this with mum during the week because when I told her, you know, I'd been on this Hot Wheels podcast thing, she was like, oh, wow, you had heaps of Hot Wheels as a kid, but we left them all at a place where we moved away and accidentally left all your cars there and you were so sad. And I'm like, I don't remember any of that, but that kind of, yeah. 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 You're like, wait, mum, wait, you're telling me this now? I'm, I'm a full grown adult and... I can't talk to you anymore, Mom. I got to go. Or you owe me some Hot Wheels, so you better start getting me some more Hot Wheels, like a, a, a big W. So, Mom, Mom, uh, do, is, is it Mrs. Taylor, Scott? Is it, is oh, it, it certainly is. Okay, yeah. Mrs. Taylor, head to Big W now. Go to bigw.co.au, and, and you can pick some up now for, for little Scotty here, as uh, they all get left behind. Little Scotty. <laughs> Scott, no one's they, called me Little Scotty for a long time. Well, I just <clears> did, and, and I don't feel threatened by you because we're halfway across the globe, so I could, I could call you whatever you want, Little Scotty. I'm joking. <laughs> um, thank you guys and gals for joining us here. We're going to have some fun this evening. Again, last, last year was 20 vehicles whittled down to 10, so all thriller, no filler. But let's talk about the criteria that uh, you, the judges, are going to be analyzing these 10 vehicles. And we are through the entirety of the Hot Wheels Legends Tour 2021. Authenticity, creativity, and garage spirit. I mean, those are the three things. So first, I'm going to break down authenticity. This is basically, you see a car and you say, dude, that looks like a Hot Wheel. That car just has this certain certain look that just that just really says let's shrink that down and i want to own this vehicle that car screams hot wheels so for our other two criteria i'm going to throw it over to the hot wheels designers starting with creativity Dwayne, i'm going to throw it over to you because you're an artist so you know working work, i mean i'm not taking anything away from brendan sorry brendan and all the hot wheels oh. designers but i i do love Dwayne and his sketches he did that but Dwayne, going over to you creativity what does that mean creativity is is definitely a huge part of this uh, where people come up with things that maybe we've never seen before you know they put in new engines and stuff that we never would have thought of you know I've seen cars with multiple turbos multiple superchargers and just doing real crazy stuff that that uh, the car world hasn't seen before I think that's what we're really looking for yeah, no, I like it. All right, so again, not taking anything away from any of the Hot Wheels designers. I love love Dwayne's work. Brendan, going over to you, Hot Wheels diecast designer, and it's literally in your title. So let's talk about Garage Spirit, because I think that's really the X factor in, in my mind. That's something that comes to my mind. But what about you, Brendan? Well, yeah, um, for me, it's like built, not bought. So, you know, someone who put some of their own sweat equity, they were involved in realizing their vision, their dream of realizing this car. So as opposed to just dropping it off at a shop and just picking it up when it's done, we want someone who had an involvement with making it what it is. Yeah, I like it. And you could see all of those, just the inspiration from, you know, themed themed die cast to just something absolutely unique. And that's what we're looking for yeah. with the Hot Wheels Legends Tour and just being unique, that X factor, built, not bought, having something unique and saying, wow, that looks like a Hot Wheel. That is what we're looking for. The eventual, find out the answer the question who will hold this trophy hot wheels legends australia but none of this would it be possible without our partner big w so if you're looking for some hot wheels go to big w.com dot a u so that's where scott's mom can head over right now get little scotty his hot wheels <laughs> collection he once had and we can all collect like we all know we do and again seeing all just the off the shelf and going to the rack i mean i know whenever i go to the grocery store here in the states I, i'm still i'm still thumbing through and you can see them at the end of the aisle looking for that one cool i love wagons i'm just going to put it out there and i'll tell you what there is a wagon here today and there's a vehicle that's going to get scotty really going there's a vehicle that Jess, but we're going to find out which vehicle reigns supreme here. So, speaking of cars, let's get into it. Are you guys and gals ready here? Make some noise, judges. 
Huge. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. I want to. I want to get some banter going. I want you guys talking. Some, oh, my goodness. Look at this. Woo! This 1972 <laughs> icon. Golden icon. Age yes. icon. I mean, this absolutely screams Australia. I mean, from, from the shingles on the back. Let's talk about the stats here. Purchased eight years ago as a stock vehicle. Added disc brakes, power steering, Monaro wheel, five suspension drop. And the Emery & Son signage was hand-painted as a tribute to Damien's family. All right. Uh, I, 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 feel, I feel like Jess, I'm going to go to you because it has this retro kind of fashion vibe to it jess what, this, what do you what do you this think of this car is my jam i absolutely love it it brings back so many memories it's um this is home i love a use um it's it's awesome i love the interior i actually have a use right Aye. here it's not a hot wheels one and i always wish it was a hot wheels one and it's Ford, and I wish it was Holden. So Holden holds a special place in my heart, and uh, this Ute's just sick. I love it. I love the Monaro wheels. I love the interior. It looks um oh, but the thing I love the most is the Roman blind at the back. <laughs> I think that's like a ten out of ten for creativity. Yeah, um, I love I just, it. It's everything. Yeah, as you say, uh, play on words there. Hold it, hold into my heart. It's holding my heart. I got what you did there. Um, going, going to Dwayne. Have we ever done a Hot Wheels diecast of this year? Holding you, nineteen seventy-two. No, we we've never done one of that that specific year. But Matchbox has before. So, and, and I remember that because I had that. I know that Brendan actually has one with him, but I remember it, and it had the little motorcycles in the back. Yeah. I can remember playing with that a lot as a kid too. <laughs> Rusty, <laughs> Rusty, I, uh, Rusty, you said you're you're just so proud of Aussie culture. I mean, from again the shingles to the back to the visor out front. I'm thinking you could do this even like a Bozozuku style, which would be really cool. Japanese mixed with the Australia. I'm even seeing the trailer hitch, Rusty. Well, a, a number of racers have used these cars as tow vehicles, so it's very familiar to me. One of my best mates had one when I was growing up, so I got to drive it on occasions. Look at that. A little bit of patina creeping into this one, too. That's another consideration for us as judges, isn't it? Oh, my gosh. I There's... can definitely uh, tell you, Rusty, I've uh, towed a Holden Gemini with a, <laughs> an old uh, year <laughs> like go. that. And there you go. So uh, there you go. And I love the fact that they've, they've added to the weathered look as well, so it's in true Aussie spirit. I love it, and and I feel like everybody needs to talk about this first one. Um, Brendan, not not you, yeah. no, but I'm going to go to Scotty. I'm joking. Brendan, go to you. <laughs> Brendan, <laughs> I was leaving Scott for last. No, this thing is cool to me. It's it's so iconic and quintessential to when I think of like Australian. Like this this pops up. I mean, it's just really cool, and I like the stance. Sits down low. You know, it's it's. I don't want to say culture shock, but like I hear holding wheels on there. I look at it and I see Pontiac rally wheels. So it's it's also just neat to hear that and, and see it from another perspective too. So it just adds another sense of coolness to it for me. Yeah, most definitely. And last but not least, again, not every judge is going to talk about every vehicle, but I just smiled and gave him a Vegemite sandwich. I'm talking about Scott Taylor. Go ahead, elaborate on this vehicle. <laughs> Mate, I've got a long history with HQ Utes. I learned to drive one back in the early 80s, you know, as a 12 year old out on the farm. And then uh, you know, my parents, when uh, it came time to, you know, for me to have a car, they said, well, we're not buying your car. There's enough parts out there. You build one. So 15, 16 year old, I built a HQ Ute and it looked very much like this one here. You know, I mean, brings back a lot of memories for me. I mean, what's cooler than an Aussie Ute, no matter what brand, whether it's Ford, Holden, Chrysler. In fact, we got a Chrysler Ute in the shed here behind me. So I love Aussie Utes. I love this HQ. Hey, Scott, awesome. what about the fact that it's part of history too now with what's happened with Holden in the last little while too? 100%, yeah. You know, as they keep saying, they don't make anymore. Sure, they didn't make them since 1974, but Holden as a brand, yeah, they just don't make the cars anymore. Yeah, and a great insight from obviously you guys and gals there in, in Australia and, and of course from our Hot Wheels designers. Just wanted to kind of get everybody's input there. But let's move on to our 1948 Fiat. Topolino and uh, now this vehicle it, it deemed the fire chief because built by Australian hot rodding legend Rod Hadfield 1948 American La France V12 yeah look at that 12 piston used in fire engines six speed ZF gearbox this is built from the ground up Scott you ended that last one so I'm going to start with you and I feel like you got to love this thing this is street Man. machine 
I could talk all day about this one. I mean, this car has featured in Street Machine magazine. I mean, it needs to be a Hot Wheels. There's no doubt. Rod Hadfield is an Australian <laughs> legend. I mean, he holds land speed records. He's raced the drag challenge. He's built some of the wildest cars in Australia. There is, and this car is no exception. I mean, Fiat Topolinos aren't exactly new, but they've been used as car, uh, drag cars for years. But this one's a street rod, which is a little bit different. You know, the fit and finish and styling and attention to detail is just second to none. And that engine, the LaFrance V12, 527 cubic inches, it's 8.6 litres. I mean, wow. it's just amazing. They had to stretch the, the front end 14 inches just to fit the engine. I mean, looking at the craftsmanship, Brendan, I'm going over to you, just taking a look yeah. at, at the Fiat. The, I mean, this is this is hot rod at its finest. I mean, you could see just Absolutely. from the, it, the engine being shoehorned in there, the headers. Could this be duplicated as a Hot Wheel? Let's think, let's, can we shrink this down to 164? Absolutely. You know, one of the key things about making a Hot Wheels car is reading at 164th scale. So, I mean, it's it's one thing to take a stock body and just shrink it down, but then the proportions get a little wonky. You know, the, the cab gets a little big, the wheels get a little small. This thing, you could just shrink it down. It's going to read as a Hot Wheels with that stretched front end, the engine sticking out, the rake stance, the big wheels in the back, the skinnies in the front. Yeah, that's going to look great on shelf as a Hot Wheels. And Molly, going to you, uh, your racer, more rally, and obviously now with the uh, Extreme E, have you ever raced the Topolino, a Fiat? <laughs> can't, can't say I have, but I love the fact there's, you know, more engine and wheel than car body almost in there. It's just, just incredible. And, and those extractors down the side, the detail in that, um, yeah, it just looks like a beast. I, I'm not sure how it would drive, but it would be a lot of fun regardless. Yeah, I mean, this you're, you're gonna you're gonna break some necks driving this thing down the road, and uh, that could be by the speed or just uh, what the heck was that? What, did you guys see that thing? <laughs> yeah. So, all right, let's move on to our next car, number three, our 1970 Datsun 1600. Wow, what a great fusion! I mean, the the six spoke wheels. I don't know if those are exactly TE 37s, but a very much a JDM iconic wheel. I mean, this thing obviously, you know, it has has the Lexan. It is purpose built. You could see just the whole dash there. But let's talk about purchased 10 years ago as a retired race car from the early 90s and the owner has slowly built it over time turbocharged motor custom wide body kit i'm going to go and throw it over to rusty what do you think of the Datsun 1600 that we're looking at oh, i absolutely loved it i love the color chosen in this i love the the longevity that the owner has had with the car so he's grown his story with it in that 10 year period i think for memory it's got a carbon fiber bonnet a more a modern engine but a car that in the 1970s and beyond in rallying and things like that in australia is is just so rich in history it's a great looking car i mean from the splitter there to the wide body this looks purpose built um jess going over to you there it is it looks like an sr yeah it's a, so it's a sr so it is kind of manufactured with the engine jess you were talking about wanting to race this thing looks mean i mean you know this you're you're this really you're this really kind hard. of model but i i know you kind of have a so menacing well side done. love the neon i mean this is uh this is a really well done car i yeah. love it and and obviously purpose built you could see just the the office inside of there i think it has a i always say the function is the fashion and that's that's i think that's you know if you look back to last year's legends winner riley stair it you know it didn't have crazy graphics you know from a designer standpoint Dwayne, um yeah, you know a little 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 more subdued compared to some of the other vehicles but opening a mold on this i i, I know dotsons have been created but something like this has it no, huh? -uh. It hasn't been done with the wide body quite like that yet. So, and then obviously with it all just totally raced out, you know, we haven't done a version like that with the, you know, the big wing and the the low spoilers and all that stuff. So, and I, I, as far as the subtle graphics, I love that subtle neon on there as well. I love that gray and neon combo. And I think in a little package that would still pop, you know? Yeah, that high viz, that subtle detail that, uh -huh. like you say, absolutely just pops. So, very cool car, purpose built, the 1970 Datsun 1600. Let's move on to another vehicle that Little Scotty might have ridden in at one time. <laughs> Little yeah. Scotty, the custom 850cc <laughs> six by four. Yeah, look at that. That's like the old, uh, that like the old F1 car. We saw the six by four. Originally a coin operated kids ride, and is still operated by putting in coins. Yeah. That's how you start this thing. No keys needed. You just throw a coin in there. So again, the 850 cc, six wheeled, six by four. I'm scratching my head at this thing. I think it's absolutely adorable, but it looks it looks scary. Um, I, I love know. it. 
I, I don't know. Yeah. Who's brave enough to drive cool it? Who's uh, somebody? Somebody yeah. raise their hand. I mean, somebody speak up here. I don't know anybody. Yeah. Brendan, go ahead. Cool. I, I, I yeah. want to see something love it. To be honest, that, that's what look I want to. I want to see. Look how he's starting it. So I literally puts a coin in Molly. Yeah. Yeah. Molly, have you ever? So um, little feature. Right, starting it yeah. with a coin. Molly, you said uh, you'd love to drive this thing. I mean, again, oh, I don't... I, I, I'm not saying I'd love to drive it. I'd, I'd like to see someone drive it. I'm not <laughs> sure I'm game enough to put my hand up for that job. It's, um, yeah, it, it's, it's not the prettiest thing, but it definitely makes you stop and look, doesn't it? Yeah, it makes so, you stop and look. The unique profile of it, I mean, that thing would absolutely pop on shelf. You know, we always look for yeah, different we're... shapes yeah. and silhouettes. That thing has is, is got it all the way. I think Rusty. it's so cool. Rusty, going to you, I can. I was, I was just going to say quickly, Mick Doohan, the five-time 500cc world champ, used to have some go-karts with 450cc engines in them. An 850cc engine, what about the power to weight in that thing? The ride would be <laughs> wild. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So look at that. I love. I love that it started with a coin and 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 yeah. just cut into the side over so there. Cool. Scott Taylor, this is this is a, not so much a street machine, but a, more of like a supermarket machine. Um, this is something yeah. in the states. I would see this out front of a grocery store, and I remember my mom giving me a couple coins to go ride on this thing. And now this is quite a ride, Mister Toad's Wild Ride, Scott. Mate, it not, might not be a street machine, but wow, talk about a unique car. I love the fact that they've made it coin operated. Um, you know, it's not something that I could fit into, but it's just crazy cool. <laughs> I'd love to see it ripping around a track. Um, yeah, I couldn't drive it, but uh, I'm with Molly on this. I want to see someone drive this thing. And also, let's look at the windscreen. That's the the eyes. So it's like kind of a windscreen. So imagine, look how hazy it is in there. Uh, yeah, you absolutely. Can't see much. Yeah, you can't see much, but you, what you're going to see is uh, speed just and everybody going past you while you're ripping through this uh, coin-operated go-kart. All you right, stick so we your head out of the side of it. <laughs> yeah, a little, little Ace <laughs> yeah. Ventura. There yeah. you go. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. So look at that. Quickly, we've seen four of the ten vehicles just like that, and, and, and how how insane and diverse were those first four cars. It's, it's, it's really insane. Speaking of diversity... We have our next moment here where, where Brendan is actually going to talk about a, a, a gentleman that is as diverse and creative and his affinity and just absolutely has put his fingerprint on this iconic brand that is Hot Wheels. So, Brendan, I'm going to throw it over to you, near and dear to your heart. Say it with a smile on your face and with love in your heart. And uh, again, this is a little tribute to Ryu yeah. Asada. Ryu Asada, Yes. We would like to take a few moments to remember one of our own, our passionate designer of Hot Wheels cars for over 16 years and a true lover of car culture, Ryu Asada. Ryu left us all too early, but the mark he has made in the automotive community has touched the lives of millions, and his brilliant designs were instrumental in transforming Hot Wheels into what it is today. Ryu joined Mattel in 2004 on the Matchbox team and moved over to the Hot Wheels team in 2013 when he became a lead designer for the Hot Wheels mainline. However, he had already designed numerous Hot Wheels vehicles like the Geronimo, Formula Street, Super Blitzen, Bentley SS, Honda CRX, and the Honda S2000, which was inspired by his real-life daily driver. He was a key designer for the Team Hot Wheels World Record Jump Truck in 2011 and assisted in creating the design of the Team Hot Wheels Double Dare Loop Cars for the X Games the following year. He first, his first project after becoming an official Hot Wheels designer was the 67 Chevy C10 in 2013, and he continued designing many more models in both the basic and premium lines. His favorite brand was Honda and enjoyed bringing many of those models to life, and he enjoyed bringing his own ideas into the line as well with vehicles like the Manga Tuner, the Roller Toaster, and Buns of Steel, to name a few. Outside of work, you know, Ryu enjoyed mountain biking with his wife, driving his 94 Acura NSX or his 04 S2K on Canyon Roads, open track days. He also enjoyed customizing Hot Wheels cars, building model kits and RC cars. He also regularly attended car meets and auto events for inspiration in his own projects and was a pillar in many automotive communities. On last year's show, he described himself as just a guy who never grew up and like to play with cars and toys all day long. On behalf of everyone here on the team at Hot Wheels, we will miss you, Ryu, and your work will live on. 
Thank you so much, Brendan. And of course, Dwayne, I know you worked with him as well. And, and so many of the Hot Whale enthusiasts and family are, is very familiar with Ryu's work. And yeah. I love that everybody can hold a little piece of Ryu with them forever. And uh, thank you for all that he's done for the Hot Wheels brand. And of course, his legacy will still yes. live on. Yeah, absolutely. Dwayne, he, anything he, you want to say? Yeah, he was just, he was like the epitome of a humble person. You know, he, he did all this great stuff at Hot Wheels and, you know, attended to so many shows and did so many great things. And he would always just talk to you and make sure that, you know, you were doing OK. He had, you know, he obviously fought cancer for so long. He. All right. Looks like, uh, unfortunately, uh, Dwayne, we lost. Yeah, we lost. We lost, we lost Dwayne, Dwayne but there. I, I can pick up. But uh, what he was saying, I mean, he was fighting it for several years, but you'd never know it. He'd come into work with a smile, never complained, never had, you know, it was never negative. It was always, you know, I'm doing great. This is going great. You know, keep working on the cars, keep doing the events. You know, he was he was doing fighting all that stuff, even while doing the Legends events, you know, over the last couple of years and stuff, too. And, you know, the other cool things about him he would sculpt his own car. So he was using the phantom arms, the, the free form programs and, and doing the sculpting, just like our sculpting team would do. Whereas many of us, we just work with a sculpting team and help art direct them to realize, you know, the hot wheels cars that we make. Um, you know, he was passionate, you know, with, with the cars that he did, he, he exposed hot wheels to many new types of cars really brought that JDM world into hot wheels, you know, with things like that manga tuner, he had that Bozuzoku truck, and, and many others as well. So yeah. it's, you know, he's just really brought Hot Wheels to that next level. And yeah. that's going to be some tough shoes to fill for sure. Yeah, I mean, he he he, he lived the life of being uh, authentic. And, and that's where, yeah. you know, all of us as automotive enthusiasts can say like, man, Hot Wheels, no joke. They have authentic down to the core. So thank you so much for obviously you, Brendan and Dwayne, for sharing your stories about Ryu. And thank you so much, Ryu, and all of you fans out there. All right. So again, say that with a smile. Thank you so much for all your contributions. Let's keep this party going. So just to catch you up, you are watching our View From Home Hot Wheels Legends Tour New, excuse me, not New Zealand. We're down in Australia now. So uh, again, uh, that was last week. But uh, thank you to Big W for their support. Again, you of course, go to Big W where you can find all your Hot Wheels diecast. So coming up next, we have our Featured Submissions 5 through 7, our Hot Wheels Design Spotlight, our Featured Submissions 8 through 10. We'll find out our judges' top three. We have our special guest, Matt McGay. And then we'll find out who wins here down under. This is Hot Wheels Legends Tour Australia. So... All right, let's yeah. move on to our next vehicles. Judges, you ready? Make some noise. Yeah. Absolutely. Bring Woo! it. Bring it. Bring All it. Bring it. All right. All right. Oh. Uh, and, and, du and Dwayne, are you unfrozen yet? No, he's still frozen. Man, he man, uh -oh. he can really hold a pose. <laughs> Strike a pose. He is chill. Dwayne is, yes. I mean... I mean, he. So I told you, he's the Devancinator. He needs a reboot. We need yeah. to control all delete the Devancinator, <laughs> and then he will be back to judge some vehicles. Moving on to our next car. Here it is, number five, 1975 Ford Falcon. Now this vehicle has just Ooh. an iconic silhouette. The question is, do you like the paint job? What's it look like? I mean, look at look at this vehicle. This is iconic. I mean, the Ford 351 motor, stage three cam, operational siren, radio, and light sp system. Uh, speaking of radio, I'm gonna go to you rusty how iconic is this vehicle for australian culture in the modern era in motoring terms uh, there's been movie stars like shane jacobson eric banner you you all know that on the panel here but mel gibson and what he did with mad max really kind of ignited the whole australian motoring automotive thing on the big screen and this absolutely tips its hat to the the first mad max movie love it really cool yeah, and and Molly, going to you. Uh, I always I always kind of lean on the racing thing here, but uh, uh, did did you ever partake in this vehicle? Do you like the lines of it? I mean, it being a sedan. I mean, it seems like a clunky car, but with the racing stripes, it, it looks pretty racy. Yeah, you know, it's a part the you know the speed is in the look, but not that specific model, but a um, XY GT Falcon. Again, huge V8. Uh, my dad used to rally. So, you know, who's to say you couldn't take that down the forest? Uh, might not be the fastest, but it's going to look, and, and importantly, just what would it do to the tires? <laughs> <laughs> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have very many tires for very long. Um, but yeah, it's just like that is Australia, that car right there. Scott Taylor, going over to you, Street Machine. Is this a Street Machine? Uh, well, I mean, this is 
part of Australian culture, car culture. I mean, when it comes to Aussie car people, there is no greater movie than Mad Max. I mean, forget Fast and Furious. Mad Max is it. <laughs> oh, I mean, wow. Yeah. Shots fired. Here yeah. we go, Scott. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, this car is a replica of Charlie and Roop's car, which are the pursuit car at the start of the movie that goes through the caravan. I mean, such an iconic crash scene. I mean, it's an Aussie Falcon, XB Ford Falcon. I mean, if this was a GT, it would be a six-figure car. Um, you know, they're worth so much money now. Man. I mean, it's yeah. a classic car, classic movie, and, you know, while it might lose some points for originality or, you know, authenticity, it's just such an awesome thing, you know? So it makes up for it in spirit, in my opinion. Yeah, I love the flares. So the that... other... Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, the other thing uh, for us old-school Hot Wheels collectors, that yellow with the stripe down there, it really... Um, has a nod to the snake, Don Prudhomme, with his cars from like the drag racers in like 1970 when you see the snake and mongoose. You know, he had that yellow car with the stripes and, and there were some stars down it, of course, but I see that in the, in the color palette just really reminds me of that too. So it also feels like a you know full-size Hot Wheels car just, just seeing those colors on there. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, that, that, that's a great point there, Brendan. And uh, Dwayne, are we back? Did, did we reboot? Oh, we are back, baby. Look yeah, at that. Back. Oh, Woo! man, smiles bigger than ever. All right, uh, speaking of going back, let's go forward, actually. We're moving on to our next vehicle here. And this thing, oh, this we, we're talking about paint jobs? Look at this thing, 1993 oh, oh. Ford Festiva, the Fester. This thing, I mean, they threw the book at this thing. They they have, you can see, oh, oh my goodness, look at this exhaust <laughs> tip. Uh, Je Jess, I'm going to go to you right out of the gate. I mean, rally cross, full light bar as a headlight, emoji-themed taillights, spinning minigun exhaust, Jess Hart, what do you say? It's a little much for me, um, <laughs> just straight off the bat. <laughs> it's um, a little much, but I'd love to rally it. I'd love to give it a go, um, see how she goes. But uh, she's a bit, she's a bit much. It's a little bit too much going on. <laughs> it's got a lot going on, hasn't it? Yeah. It has a lot going on. I mean, you you are in your closet. It's like putting every single sweatshirt on back there and At seeing the same just time. how. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, it, but, but you got to admire the creativity here, and and from what I understand, you do, and the, the effort that's gone into it. Right. I mean, look at all the fasteners. Look what's going on here. Uh, so, um, Dwayne, I, I think this is this is your favorite right here, the Fester. Um, what 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 do you think, man? Look at those tail lights. This is thing, this thing's crazy. Well, it's definitely crazy. There's no doubt about it, man. I do like those tail lights a lot. I was looking at that when I looked at the video originally, and I also heard him say something like he built the wing out of those real estate signs that he just pointed at. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was quite unique. Yeah, I mean this this thing. I, I mean, it's built for rally, but Molly, I don't know how many how many actual <laughs> stages it would survive. No, I mean, the, the, it's got some good rally tires on there, but um, yeah, it's uh, I, list, I love the sense of humor with this car. You know, everything has been handmade. It's all for a bit of fun. Um, it, it is a lot, but I, yeah, I just, I just love that. Obviously, you know, in, in the garage with their mates, having a bit of fun and going, what, what would it look like if we did this and having a laugh and then going ahead and doing it? And I love that spirit. And yep. um, it certainly looks like when they take it out on the track, they do it in that spirit as well and just you know, it's their fun project and that's what we love about motorsport, you know, it's all about having fun. So, um, not sure it's going to set any stage winning time, but uh, <laughs> whoever's in there is going to be having a good time, that's for sure. I love the uh, license plate, Festi AF, what, it, what does that stand for, Jared? Uh, Festi, <laughs> always fun. <laughs> Festi, always <laughs> fun. I like it. Yeah, it's, I mean, no matter what. I mean, it's got roof scoops. It's got the pink roll cage, the color palette here. Uh, absolutely art deco from a Hot Wheels standpoint. This is a lot of fun for you designers. But, uh, you know, will, will it win? We'll see. I mean, custom badging there, the Adam Z up front. I mean, I mean, you go around this thing. Every single corner of this is it's like a calico cat, a different color and, all and the Jared, way around. Jared. Did, didn't it also? I, I think it's also had some sound effects. So he he uh, he was able to set it up and, and make a fake turbo sound. So I mean, the creativity here goes to great lengths, doesn't it? Yeah, and, and so I, I don't think there's audio that comes as a legend's winner. So that is definitely lost on our Hot Wheels collectors. So let's move on to our next vehicle here. And now this thing we've seen a Fiat Topolino earlier, but this is a 1923 Ford Roadster mixed with a Fiat Topolino. Now this is hand-built steel Fiat. 
Topolino body on a 1923 Ford T-Bucket chassis. This is a Chevy 350 motor with alloy heads and nitrous, T350 gearbox, ceramic brakes, diamond stitch marine vinyl interior. I mean, this is what we talked about earlier. This thing looks like a Hot Wheel. The question is, is it is the work already done for you, Dwayne? I mean, basically like, all right, it's done. There it is. Put a bow on it. This thing wins. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing would make a great Hot Wheel. There's no doubt about it. It's got a great stance, you know, that low kind of rake on it and stuff. And the uh, it's definitely unique. I got to say it's unique with the tire in the back and all the body shaping that he's done. And even the colors, you know, that white with the green stripe on it, it'd make a good Hot Wheel for sure. Rusty, going over to you, I mean, this this has so many different things just smashed together in one. It's it's definitely like just pop culture. You see the Fiat, the Ford, you, you see all the different lines and, and cues here, even the, the spiked almost like punk rock on the fender flares there, Rusty. It's car number seven going to be lucky number seven in our lineup of, of cars to judge from here. The other thing for me, Jared, that's, that stuck out with this entry was the attention to detail. As the video continued, they actually took the camera underneath the car and look at this. Just look at how beautifully finished the car is in every sense of the word. I, I love the fact that you get a, a chassis of one particular make molded with the brand or the body of another. Some great stuff about this entry. No, that's a great point. That's all that's coming down to the details. So evil. It says on a license plate, and, and it, it's just mean. I mean, just most recently, I received some of the Redline Club, uh, you know, die cast, and I got a lowrider, and it came with a little mirror that went underneath the lowrider. So I think that, you know, the evolution of what, you know, the Hot Wheels brand and what you designers can do is really fantastic. So doing the deco maybe underneath, uh, Brendan, have you ever done anything like that, doing something custom? Because usually you see chrome or black or anything like that uh some of the cars that i work on like on a redline club like i worked on that impala we will do some shutoffs in the chassis so that we can get some of the engine detail that will poke through giving some of those those cool color breaks as well as the the surfacing and the form of it so we could do things like that it might be a little bit more of a challenge in the main line where the cars are typically four pieces and everything's drop in assembly but you never know. I mean, we, we do make exceptions and go to greater lengths to make sure that those Legends cars are realized as best as possible. Uh, Scott Taylor going to you, Street Machine. I think, does it does this scream Aussie to you? I mean, I, th I feel like it, it has the Aussie influence, but also has a, kind of an Americana vibe to it as well. It's interesting what you say about the influences. I mean, it's a Topolino body on a T-Bucket chassis. It shares styling cues from both, but it doesn't really look like either, you know? Uh, I kind of dig that the steering wheel and the engine are the kind of the same level with the roof. Uh, imagine cruising this thing down the street. I mean, you would be the center of attention anywhere you went. I mean, it must be what Jess Hart feels like when she walks down the street. You know? Hey, <laughs> Jess, here's your new ride. Congratulations. You, sweetheart, thank you so much. Um, I'm not really a hot rod girl, so, I, you know, I mean, I can see and love and appreciate everything that's gone into this one. Um, but they're just not my thing. I'm sorry. That's fair. That's fair. So the Fiesta is yours. That last vehicle, the 1993 <laughs> Ford Fiesta. Congratulations. The fi Festiva, excuse me. <laughs> All right. Again, thank you so much to our retail partner, Big W. Go to bigw.com.au and uh, purchase Little Scotty some more Hot Wheels. Send them over. We'll send over his address. But also, you can keep some for yourself as well. But again, <laughs> thank you so much to Big W for being our retail partner. All right, uh, just moving on down the line here. Now it's time to uh, wrap out with our Hot Wheels designers because uh, our two gentlemen here, Brendan and Dwayne, uh, two very talented gentlemen. Again, one of you been been at Hot... Wow, well, I can speak English too. I speak American, that's what I do. Uh, one of you been at Hot Wheels. I did it again, uh, longer than the other. But uh, I, wanted, I wanted to throw it over to Brendan because we talked about Riley Stair and he was the most recent winner of Hot Wheels Legends Tour. His vehicle is currently being shrunken down for lack of better term and being kind of modeled to be created as our Hot Wheels Legends winner that 164th. So cool. Yes, that car um, I got to work on it so it's a Pontiac so you know I kind of said hey I'd love to work on it and it, the steel's already been cut we've seen pictures of the EP sample and that's engineering pilot so it's it's basically and it was just a different color like it hasn't had the, the graphics on it yet but they've created the e-sheet all that's licensed or approved 
So the car is well on its way to being in production. And yeah. it looks really, really great. I, I don't think, you know, when you look at it, it'd be like, wow, that's a dollar car. It, it looks more premium than that. So I think he'll be proud. I, I, then you bring up a great point there, you know. Just and we were we were even talking about it before we went live here with my production crew and talking about just aesthetically. You know, you look at the previous winners from the two Jet Z to the Nash, mm -hmm. right? The Metropolitan two Riley Stairs vehicle. Quite a contrast over the years, and you know we're seeing ten vehicles here this evening. But I think that really uh, comes down to the diversity of being a hot rodder. So, Dwayne, going to you, you've written multiple books. You've you know again, you have your own Devancinator. Uh, what kind of responsibility is it to make vehicles that kind of fly off the shelf? Well, it, it's kind of hard. You can't always hit a home run, I guess. <laughs> but uh, we try our best. And, uh, you know, they definitely, Mattel at Hot Wheels specifically, they hire some of the best designers there for for cars. I can guarantee you that we're, every single one of us that design there are very passionate about the car world. And the cool thing is we all have different interests. You know, we all might like JDM style stuff. Some of us like pro street stuff or, you know, hot rods or muscle cars and stuff like that. So it's a, uh, it's definitely a, a very talented and fun group to work in. And I have to pinch myself all the time that I get to do this as a job every day. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I think that's what's great about just being in this in this petri dish of design. You know, like like you said, you have hot rod paintings behind you. You've published books. I'm seeing warbirds there. Uh, just overall, it's 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 got to be really interesting. What would you say to somebody aspiring to be a Hot Wheels designer? What would you say would be maybe a path to become? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna bounce back to you, Brendan, and then I'd like to hear your yeah. response, Wayne, because everybody okay. has their own journey. But Brendan, first, you. Well, um, you know, a lot of us have gone to an industrial design school of some type. Um, most of the people on the diecast team went to Art Center, although not all of us have. And <laughs> but there's there's always been that background of cars because some people came from the automotive industry where they were designing real cars first. Some of us came straight out of school. A few of us, like myself, I started Hot Wheels on the track and play sets team. But my passion has always been cars. I'm very mechanically oriented, which is why I work on like some of the RLC product lines where like that Impala with the adjustable suspension. I got a couple other vehicles that have come out in the line with different types of suspension. So we can bring a lot of innovation and things into diecast as well. And just having that passion, being able to communicate visually, like with drawing sketches, Photoshop, stuff like that, or sculpting, you know, we all, however we represent, you know, the ideas, um, you know, that's, that's a very important part of what we do. I as like well it. as having that knowledge and that passion too. Yeah, so you started out on the right track. See what I did there? Dad jokes, dad bomb, oh, that's what I do. Yeah. You started <laughs> on the right track at Hot Wheels. So, um, uh, Dwayne, I'm going to throw it over to you. Again, we've talked before, but uh, just short and tight. And then one of you judges, I want to see you raise a hand who's got a question for one of our designers here. But, Dwayne, over to you. Yeah, I get that question a lot from uh, you know kids that – or I shouldn't say kids, but people that want to work at Hot Wheels. Um, and one of one of my biggest uh, things that we look for in portfolios is they got to have a little bit of an entertainment value to it, because when we're doing these cars, we're not just replicating a car. We have to do things to the car to make it look cooler and to make it appeal to the crowd at a small scale. You know, so whether it be you know, you make bigger wheels or, you know, I'm part of the character car group where you actually take a character and you make them into a car. So you've got to have a lot of imagination there too. Not just knowing cars can be enough to work at Hot Wheels. So I always tell people, you know, have a little bit of entertainment value with your stuff. I like it. I like it. All right. Uh, any of our other judges have a question? Uh, raise your hand if you may. I've, I've got uh, a question. Oh, look at that. Molly, go. Well, the other day I did a live stream with the Starlight Children's Foundation and one of our challenges was to draw a car. So I want to show you what I drew to see if I've got <laughs> any chance in the future. Are you, are you ready? Let, yeah, let's ready. go. You're hired. You're hired. Yep. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Molly, that is That's tremendous. Awesome. And there is your Australia <laughs> Legends <laughs> winner 2021, <laughs> Molly it. Taylor. Molly, what do you what do you call it, Molly? Um, look, I'm not sure we could really yeah. call it a car. The rear wheel's not even anywhere close to the right position. So, um, but you know, I've got to start somewhere. So, was that a guess? I, I, th I think uh, it's done. 
I yeah, think, I, yeah, I think we could produce a car out of that, right, Brendan? Just chew yeah. in. We'll yeah, absolutely. absolutely. All right. Well, um, I, I would love to hear all the questions from everybody, but we're, we are going to move on because we have three more cars, three more cars here in our Hot Wheels Legends Australia Stop 2021. So let's see our next vehicle. We talk about the iconic manufacturer and we are back at it again. So this is the 1993 Holden VP Commodore. Now, this vehicle never saw, we never saw this vehicle stateside, so I always think it's just really interesting, but that is obviously the heart of a beast. That is a street machine. This is used as a daily car until embarking on a 10-year project from the ground up. Holden 304 stroked to a 383, 640 horsepower at the flywheel, full airbag suspension. Oh man, this is four to one headers going to twin three inch stainless exhaust, Italian leather interior, and it has the Simmons three piece wheels. It looks like, a, I mean, just this, the Holden Commodore looks so interesting. It looks like a Nissan Sentra on the front and a bit of like a Ford Taurus on the back with that arch out the back. Uh, Scott, I got to go to you. Street Machine, I, I feel like, do you love this thing? Loathe it? Are you ready? Give me the keys. What do you say? Hey, man, I, I dig Commodores. We got one on the hoist right there behind me. Uh, not as nice as this, nowhere near as nice, and about half the horsepower. But I, I love that it's the owner's first car, and then he's gone from daily driver to this. I mean, this thing's a show winner at some of Australia's biggest shows. But, you know, it's not just a trophy car. I mean, 383 cubic inches, 640 horsepower. It's a Holden V8, too. So, Aussie made Holden V8. So it's basically a supercar for the streets, but a bit nicer, you know, airbags, custom trim, Simmons wheels, pump and stereo. Uh, it's just fantastic. It's a work of art. I love it. Speaking of V8 and, and being Australia, V8 supercar, throwing it over to you, Rusty. Um, what, what do you what do you think of this? Uh, Jared, I, I want to sort of uh, expand a little bit on, on what uh, Scott said a minute ago, and, and that is, you know, uh, so much heritage in, in racing in Australia for, for cars like this. Little things really hit me with this one. The way that the Recaro seats were kind of kept in a, a period look or colour. The drop tank, I think, is only 10 mil uh, off the ground. This is a, uh, a beautiful piece of work for a, a brand that is no longer with us. Yeah, very, very well done. Yeah, and it looked like, I like what you said, it's just kind of, it's a bit of a time capsule, right? And, and the exactly. license plate says Annihilate. I don't know if you guys caught that. It was an <laughs> adorable play on words. So, um, Brendan, going over to you, yeah. has, has this year Holden Commodore ever been made into a Hot Wheel? Not that I'm aware of. I know that there was something, I think, uh, early 2000s, late 90s that Mark Jones worked on, but turned into a race car. But nothing like this that I'm aware of. But I really like this one because not only like everything that was mentioned already, but you've got this vehicle that looks like a sedate sedan, but yet there's this engine sticking out of it. And I love stuff like that. Not to mention, this thing has a great story too. Again, being the, the owner's first car and all the, all the buildup of it too. But like when we got to read about this and, and see the videos and stuff and just seeing like everything that's been done to it, that's a, a great part you know, when we're looking for the legends, uh, candidates and winners too. Yeah. And that's what you talked about that built, not bought. And that's exactly what yeah. this owner did. So, all right, let's move on to our next vehicle. I feel like Scotty's going to love this one, but I think we'll all love it. Retina burning green. Oh man. The 1974 Ford Escort and, uh, built from a bare shell by the owner, 253 Holden V8 motor. This is a 471 supercharger at eight PSI producing 600 horsepower. And that's where you Ooh. get that smoke absolutely pluming out of the back oh man uh I, i'm i'm gonna go to uh not scott uh, i'm gonna go to uh i'm gonna go to Dwayne first i always kind of end things with the designers but Dwayne, um you're a hot rodder at heart this this iconic ford escort i mean this thing has seen rally courses it's seen drag strips it's seen burnout competitions but Dwayne, you as an american what do you think oh i absolutely love this thing I had a good friend that had an Escort and it was kind of before the JDM stuff came out and he always worked on it. A lot of people thought it was a piece of junk at the time, but I always loved the Escorts for some reason. And I just love what what they did with this, with the big old engine sticking out of it. And that thing, I mean, how much do you think that car weighs? 3,000 pounds at the most, maybe? Yeah, go to, I, I'll, I'll go to Scott on that one. Less. Scott, what do yeah. you think? Like, like 2,200. So that thing just yeah. got a scream down the street. It looks like so much fun. 
Scott, uh, Scott, going to you, uh, you were talking about stats here, and I, I, I feel like you might even know the owner of this vehicle, Scott. I certainly do, actually. Uh, okay. you know, and that's not going to play a part in this, but, uh, man, it is such a cool car. I've got to say, I love it. I've been up and close and personal with it many times. In fact, our MX-5 here was parked next to it at a car show just a few weeks ago. I mean, I've seen it progress from a stock little Mark One Escort up into what it is, this, you know, tire frying monster it is now i mean and it doesn't just fry tires this thing runs tens down the quarter i mean it's, it has been quite controversial though i mean it was a street machine cover car and you know the fact that it's a a ford with a holden v8 i mean that fired a lot of people up i mean but still you gotta love it you know 600 horsepower from the little 253 with that blower on it runs on methanol you know it's just the perfect little hot wheels car yeah, no. Scott, the, the, no, you, no, you reckon it screams Hot Wheels, guys? It screams oh, the juxtaposition 100%. of that. It's so cool. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, if I walked past that, I would, I would buy it for sure. <laughs> Maybe you couldn't afford the real one, but as a Hot Wheels, I would. Uh, oh, okay. I, th I thought that. you meant the actual <laughs> real car. I was like, wow, Molly's <laughs> got it like that. I wish. <laughs> well, I, I love the color. Here. That green is my absolute favorite color. I have a BMX in that color, um, and so for me, that's where it wins its points. But it is a Ford, and I'm a Holden girl. But I do like that it's a Holden engine, so I might be able to be. <laughs> you, you could be persuaded there and that and that happens so much in the states you know you'll you'll see you'll even see like even even this weekend i'm going out to ls fest you know and you'll see fords with ls's you know and, and you'll see everybody kind of throwing different engines in different manufacturers so it might offend some people but that is hot rodding in the purest form right i mean Dwayne, mm -hmm. that's 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 exactly what kind of you know we're looking for is that yeah, hot rod activity yep and i yeah, love yeah. i love seeing all this stuff I think way back when that you always had your Ford guys, you had your Chevy guys, you had your Pontiac guys, but now I feel like the car culture is starting to cross a lot. And as as an older guy, I actually like that stuff. I like seeing that new creativity and the, you know, spicing it up a bit. And maybe you offend a few people, but you make some really cool cars. You know, being a young guy, me just turning 21, I, I totally agree as well. Um, you know, you talk about your age, but it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm I'm young at heart. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Exactly. I'm 25 <laughs> eternally up here. Um, so, all right. And I mean, look at this. We are already on our 10th vehicle, and I love just all the input and everything. But I told you. There was a wagon, and here it is. I absolutely love wagons, and we get a different perspective on this car because you know we saw burnouts, we saw kind of interiors. Now we get a drone shot. I get it. Due to COVID, we kind of want to practice social distancing, but uh, the the owner of this vehicle really did as a flew a drone around this 1971 Toyota Corolla. The owner got the car for free. Yeah free 20 years ago after it had been stolen, crashed, and stripped of most of its parts. So it has the 1.5 liter 5K engine, new heads, twin side draft carburetors, and new cam, source genuine JDM body parts and wheels, Sparco racing seats. Now, I, again, I have an affinity for wagons. Some people love, some people loathe them. This screams JDM. Does it scream Aussie? Does it scream Hot Wheels? Rusty, I'm going to go to you, man. This is something really different. I love the fact that it's got the Toyota Team Racing style paint scheme. I, Jared, I need to go back to my notes, but I, I, I want to say it actually was uh, when it was found in the paddock by the owner that it was actually a van, a panel van, wasn't it? And that the wagon windows were then uh, integrated by the owner. If that's the case, very cool end result. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and that and that's that goes back to even you know not just an engine going inside of this little car that you know you could you could wind up on the carpet and go. Um, that's just about creativity and uniqueness. So, uh, uh, Brendan, you as a, again a Hot Wheel designer looking at this, this car kind of looks similar to last week's winner as well. But Mazda now going to Toyota, and obviously more room inside. But Brendan, going to you. <laughs> yeah, this thing's really cool. We don't have enough wagons in the Hot Wheels line, so. Yeah. always be welcoming some more and it's got a nice stance i like the build to it the attention to detail this thing looks great one of my uh, first rally cars was a similar era toyota Celica, and we had that paint scheme on it so for me i'm going back to my 18 year old self trying to muscle this car around with no power steering and that just brings back so many memories looking at that car and uh, it's really really special and i was so excited when i saw it uh, come in the final 10. I love it. No, yeah. Uh, anybody else uh, got got insight here, or maybe saying slamming it, or literally slamming it because they like it? Or Scott going to you? Man, 
Jared, you know me. I'm all about that long roof style. We talked about this uh, last week. I've got a couple of wagons myself. I mean, it's such an awesome story that they've dragged it out of a paddock and then restored. I won't say restored. They've like the truth is they've amped it up a hundredfold. I mean, they were never this cool when they left the factory. I mean, it is such a cool little beast. I would have loved to have seen what's inside and under the bonnet though. I, I, yeah, I, again, they talk about the engine. They're saying a 1.5 liter, so the engine's probably half of uh, half of what's under the hood. And then interior-wise, it looks like it's just all business. You know, you can see there's no back seat there. And again, what's really neat about this is traditionally a lot of the wagons will be four doors. This is a two-door wagon, so it's all, like mm. you said, that really long roof. I think this would make a really, really good Hot Wheel. So uh, thank you guys and gals here for all your insight on 10 vehicles. The party uh, we've seen as far as the vehicles, that is over, but now you guys and gals have to do some serious work. Rack your brains. Which vehicle do you think is your 3-2-1? Remember, we're going to call them out. But before that, just to catch you up, you're watching The View From Home, Hot Wheels Legends 2021. And we are representing, and we I'm calling you right now from Los Angeles, but this is being projected down under to Australia as well as New Zealand. So next up, we'll be seeing our judges top three. And if you're looking for Hot Wheels yourself, remember, go over to Big W and pick some up. So we've just finished viewing the 10 submissions. Up next, we have our special guest, Matt McGay, and then we'll eventually find out who our winner is here at Hot Wheels Legends Australia 2021. All right, so uh, let's take a, a quick a quick look at the vehicles that we've seen because, like I said, just how quickly, you know, man, we just ripped right through them. Again, we saw that Fiat. We saw the Datsun. Uh, you, oh, oh can, you, can you not forget the quarter-operated machine, an iconic vehicle? Diversity is really key here, and I think that could be really flexed. Uh, Rusty, what, what do you say about this? Does this really represent Australia? You said you're loud and proud Aussie. Uh, in, in many ways it does, but in the essence, Jared, of what this whole contest is about, we're about authenticity, creativity, a garage spirit, as you say. We've got that blended in with some of those other cars like the, the Topolino and the Ford Roadster Topolino. There's some great stuff. This is a very, very hard job whittling this down to three, I've got to tell you. That is right. So uh, so right here, this is what is up for grabs. Not only the trophy, but of course, uh, we want, the winner will be joining the other winners of each stop of the Hot Wheels Legends Tour, Tour Look at Home in Los Angeles. Hopefully, we can bring the vehicles over, throw them on a plane and get them over here, or they will join us virtually just like we are doing right now. So again, authenticity, creativity, garage spirit, Rusty, you just talked about it, and each judge is going to pick their... They're three, two, one. So uh, are, are we going into it? Are, are, are we ready? Okay, so remember, each of the judges, you're going three, two, one. If you can, tell us the number of the vehicle. And if you want to rattle off the year, make, and model, that is ideal as well. But I'm going to I'm going to kick things off with Rusty. Rusty, what do you say? Three, I wanna, two, one. Let's I, go. I, I want to go uh, number three. We're going to go uh, car number or entry number eight, which is the 1993 uh, Holden Commodore. I love the story on this, how it was. I think uh, he, he, he had his, uh, his L plates when he first started out. The, the history, the backstory on this, how it's been with him the whole way and the beautiful attention to detail. So that's my, my number three. We'll move to number two now. And Hot Wheels, of course, is, um, you, you know, you, we want a vehicle that screams Hot Wheels. And for me, this did for all sorts of reasons. We're talking about entry number two, the 1948 Fiat Topolino. Rod is properly passionate in every way, shape and form. I love the fact that it's a 48 Topolino and then he's found a beautiful 1948 era uh, engine. He may be a quietly spoken guy, but he loves his cars. And I, I love the fact that his daughter helped make this submission possible, that she got involved in it. That's, that's key. Final one, I know I'm talking too much here, Jared, sorry. Number one for me uh, is entry number nine, car number nine, the 1974 Ford Escort. In so many ways, this for me was, it, it's very difficult to pick a winner. I know it's very difficult to pick a number one, but this for me just just oozes Hot Wheels from the design, from the creativity. And as the word I used before was the juxtaposition. A Holden engine in a famous Ford body, that for me is the number one. 
Well, it's number one, but it's the tough 253 because that's the engine size. And again, back to that Fiat that was called the Fire Chief. So a lot of branding already being created. Pretty easy job for our, uh, our Hot Wheels designers there of Brendan and Dwayne. Um, speaking of Hot Wheels designers, Brendan, I'm going to go over to you. I'm going to bounce around here. All right. Brendan, let's do it. Again, third, second, first, send it. Okay, well, not to copy um, Rusty, but also number eight, the 93 Holden Commodore was my third pick. And, you know, you, you, we talk about, you know, the authenticity, you know, things that we haven't seen before. I haven't seen anything like this before. You know, we've seen a lot of the other cars, a lot of the cars even entered today, but nothing like this. So this one really captured my attention, not to mention the story behind it and, and all that cool stuff that we talked about before. Um, Number two, I'm going with the uh, pick number four, which is that six by four go kart. You know, we also, <laughs> like Dwayne was talking about, we have whimsical and fun vehicles in the Hot Wheels line too. We do go karts. Um, you know, I created the Gotta Go casting, which was a toilet car a few years ago. And, you know, there's always room for humor in Hot Wheels too. And this thing is just so unique and so different. I think, I can't imagine a kid wouldn't love to play with this car at 164th scale. And for me, number one also is number nine, that 74 Ford Escort. That thing just checks all the boxes. And yeah, that, that just says win, win to me all day long. That all right. And this, cool. yeah, it says bloke's advice. And the bloke's advice is uh, this thing might be uh, running away and everybody's going to be green with envy. All right. Let's <laughs> jump over to Molly Taylor. Molly, what do you got? All right, well, number three, um, I'm going for number three, the 1970 Datsun 1600. I'm sorry, as a rally girl, this just has the ultimate Aussie rally heritage. It's got to gotta get out there, and I love the look as well um, and just the, the cleanness of it. So that's number three. Uh, number two, I'm going for number seven, the 1923 Ford Roadster. The, the creativity and the attention to detail is just second to none on this thing. It, it, it's so incredible. You just keep looking at it and finding new things every time you, you take a look at it. And number one, um, <laughs> it looks like we're all going on a very, very similar theme <laughs> here. Um, I'm also number nine, the 1974 Ford Escort. To, like that just, that ticks all the boxes, the authenticity, the creativity and that garage spirit. It really embodies completely each of those facets well and said. you know one of the most iconic rally cars as well. So that, that was an easy choice, number one for me. That, um, yeah, that's amazing. All right. Well, uh, we talked about an inside job. Scotty knows the the owner of this vehicle. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I gave Mad Mike, remember, a ration last weekend. Scott, uh, I can't wait to, to hang out with you outside of uh, doing this virtually. We need to meet physically. But, uh, Scott, uh, going to you, I got to ask you, what is the significance of Mexico on the side? Why, do, why does he have Mexico on, or he or she or whomever has Mexico on the side of that vehicle? And then after that, if we get your 321. I believe it was some sort of rally special, but uh, I was going to look that up before the show and I forgot to do it. I ran out of time. <laughs> uh, of course, you throw good. that question to me, but no I don't problem, know the man. full specifics. I know they had that the pumped guards were part of some Mexico model in uh, of rally um, Mark One Escort. So, awesome. yeah. But of my top three, my uh, third pick is car number five, the Mad Max Falcon. I'm, I'm, look, I know there's some licensing issues with movie cars and all that <laughs> sort of thing, but it's an Aussie XB Falcon with a 351 V8, you know, and I love that they've kept to the original design. Uh, in fact, I reckon you guys need to hook up a licensing deal and do the Mad Max movie cars, you know, because they would sell like hotcakes, you know. Uh, number two. Mm. All right is number car number nine the little escort shannon shannon is a friend of mine and you know i love this car i have such a soft spot for mark ones and i do love that mexico flare treatment you know and the eye popping color i mean it just stands out and then you got that holden v8 hanging out the bonnet um even though i've given it second place though i think it's going to take the win tonight but it definitely deserves to be a Hot Wheels car. Well, so. you didn't help it at all. Thanks, Scott. All right, your number one. What's your number one, bud? My number one is the Fire Chief. The number car number two, the Topolino. Uh, it just epitomizes Hot Wheels. I mean, the, just the whole ethos of Hot Wheels. You know, that funky shape is a, such a drag racing, you know, history. And then Rod, you know, just putting that V12 motor in there. I mean, it's just amazing. It's got the look, it's got the style. I mean, and Rod just builds 
amazing cars. I could name 10 cars that he's built that could be made into Hot Wheels cars and they would be all amazing. So the guy's an Australian legend and uh, this thing does deserve to be immortalized into a Hot Wheels car. Awesome. I love it. And great insight on all the vehicles and love everything that uh, Street Machine has done with these two rounds as well. So thank you so much no, thank uh, you. to Street Thanks Machine and you, Scott Taylor. All right, let's move it on to uh, the fashionable one. Or not, not taking anything away, but fashion model. We're throwing it over to Jess Hart. I mean, I mean, I, I love your, your black shirt there, Scott, but pink and black. <laughs> and I mean, you can see her whole wardrobe here. Jess, going over to you, if you will, your third, second, and your first. Okay, so my... Third is going to be number three, the Datsun. My theme here is spring. <laughs> Datsuns are just so Aussie. It just takes me right home. And this thing um, is just a race car and looks sick. And I think it would be an amazing um, Hot Wheels. Number two is going to be the um, 1993 Holden Commodore, car eight, number eight. Um, this thing, a Commodore is also, again, close to my heart. Uh, grew up running around in these things all the time. This has just got an amazing story. I think it looks beautiful. He's put so much love and care into this. Uh, it's just amazing. And then number one is the number one. Hey. See? because I would love to see that car representing Australia um, for Hot Wheels. For me, Hold this on, is Jess. just so nostalgic. Um, that's that's what I want to see. I love it, yeah, and, and and how soon we kind of forget that we, you know, we saw this and we are all enamored about this, you know, kind of classic and just, I, I think that car could absolutely be executed really fun and I think it would fly off off of, you know, maybe a lot of Australian pegs. I don't know how many U.S. pegs they go, what is that thing? Well, I don't even, you know, that's it's, 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 it's it a though. car I mean, up front and it's a truck out back. I mean, this thing's me. throwing me absolutely off. It um, showed me what all, all the cars were that, that were out there in the world, you know. This is like how I learned about my cars is through Hot Wheels. So we can show some Americans what they're all about. I like it. I like it. That's that's well said there. Thank you, Jess. All right. And uh, I, I believe, right, Brendan, I'm, I'm bouncing all around here. Brendan, I got yours, but yeah. I, I believe Dwayne, yeah. we're, we're waiting for you last, but definitely not least. Yeah. Dwayne Double Vance, the Devancinator. Before I get disconnected again. Here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm joking. I, I'm not frozen. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Dwayne. <laughs> All right, my uh, my top three picks were um, I love the Holden Ute, so number one. Okay, Holden was, Holden was number Ute. Number three. So you and Jess were in line, not your number one, but that's your third pick. Yep. Number one, the Holden I, Ute. I love that. Uh, and then number, I don't know what number it was, but the go kart. I think that was four. Yes, that number is number four. four. Yes. Number yeah. four, the six by four go kart. I love that thing. I think that would look really cool on a shelf <laughs> as a Hot yeah. Wheel. Well, that's that's you. You and Brendan were aligned on that, just kind of creating something yeah. unique that has, you know, looks. I mean, that thing would look really cool. And you are the two designers, that, and the only two gentlemen that actually picked that car. So I think you're you're <laughs> in for the effort of designing that and really recreating that. See, and I didn't even see what Brendan picked. So oh, that's fair. <laughs> I that's, guess we are aligned. Yeah, that's good. All right, your number one. Your number All right, one. My Dwayne. number one has to be the seventy four Escort. And number um, nine. I, I, I just love the, the fact that they did use the Holden engine in there, and it's, it, that is a really cool car. I, I'd love to see that as a Hot Wheel for sure. So many cool cars. Round of applause from all our judges for all 10 vehicles here. I think we really got just a, a good DNA of Australian automotive culture from the Holdens to the Commodores to the Fiats to uh, to go-karts and uh, kids' rides. Uh, <laughs> coin operated vehicles really that was a, it was a weird flex but okay uh here's my two cents literally you can start that thing up all right next up we have a special guest and we had him on last week this gentleman is a veteran of stadium super trucks and uh, he's actually just created a new movie that is available now challenge accepted which really explores his thrilling life and how he really turned something that could have actually taken his life he says challenge accepted i believe do we have do we have him on the phone is he here is are we getting him in and here he comes in he's piped in he's worked with hot wheels for numerous years he's seen the iconic logo on the side of numerous vehicles from shredding on four wheels two wheels there he is matt mcgay what's up man hey guys how are you big up big up hey, everyone it's been big eye to molly and rossi how you guys going good night mate you, uh, you said we were going to go drifting sometime. I'm still waiting for that, that date to be set. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you're ready, we'll you're, you're on. on. 
So good. R- Rusty, any, any questions here for Matt? I'm just going to go right out of the gate, uh, man. Uh, um, Jared, for me, Matt, firstly, on behalf of all of the panel here, massive congratulations. You're an inspiration, mate, and the, the documentary, the movie reflects that. I, I think what would be really cool for 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 the, the panelists that are beaming in from, from America is to give our international audience a sense of the passion uh, on Australian shores for, for cars like this. So when you've got the drift cars at supercars events, when you've got the stadium truck there, the fans love to come around and to ask you questions about it and what you've integrated and built on them, don't they? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, mate. I do about 28 to 30 events a year. I perform in front of 2.2, approximately a million people per year. So we've been pretty busy nearly every, every fortnight. Um, so it, 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 my, uh, the crowd just absolutely loves what we do. Um, we, people just can't get enough of it, so we love it. Yeah, and, and you've partnered with Hot Wheels since 2014, so this isn't just something that's happened, you know, just yesterday. You've worked with them, and, and, and you're getting kind of new blood into it because, I mean, when we when we roll the tape of, of you jumping in trucks and drifting around, I'm seeing I'm seeing a young pilot there as well alongside you. Absolutely, man. I got my oh. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> I'm right back here. He does, he's an unbelievable job. He just turned 14, and... Um, he, uh, he's his own, own little drift car, his own little, little super track, and um, he performs with me pretty well most of the events I go to every year. And um, every every promoter says to me, um, is there any chance little boy can go? And so he gets more and more wanted as song goes on. So the little rat bag, though, he's pretty hard to be. I give him that. I oh, will get him that one day. We'll get him. Yeah, again, two wheels, four wheels. I'm very familiar with drifting, having announced Formula Drift for 18 years. Um, I have not seen you pilot, but again, uh, I, I got to touch on obviously the accident that the, the kind of the movie was created pre- pre- previous to that, and then the incident happens, and 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 you suffered obviously, you know, to your jaw and to your face. But uh, I, I like again the whole theme of your film, challenge accepted. If you could elaborate maybe a little bit on that, and where is it available to find out about your tremendous story? Yeah, absolutely. I um, I think it was 2016. I was uh, I was racing the stadium tracks in Detroit, America. Your 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 hometown. Um, and uh, I had a massive big accident. I rolled the track and uh, as I rolled it, hit a wall, and the wall wasn't fixed properly and tore the whole roof of the truck, tore my head off with it. So it killed me twice. I uh, broke my neck. I uh, got brain injuries. Uh, a bar came through and shattered my whole chin. And to nine of my teeth, and I was in the hospital for 13 weeks. So um, the story kind of rolls around that somewhat. Um, um, I, I didn't I have a plan to do a doco. Just everyone uh, said, "Why don't you do a doco? Why don't you do a, do, do a doco?" So uh, I did it, and uh, it's been a massive hit. day. Eh? We, we can't believe the amount of people that watch it uh, and absolutely love it. So I'm very proud of it. Yeah, and, and we, we're not meant to sensationalize, you know, crashes or accidents or anything like that. But I think what's even better here is the story on the backside of, uh, of and I don't want to say downhill, but maybe landing the jump and, and clearing the gap because you jumped back behind the wheel. You know, they say get back on that horse. You jumped behind the wheel of a stadium super truck uh, just last year as well. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't wait to get back on um, do performing, you know, both my, my Harley Sunbike, my drift car and those same tracks. And uh, I raced the first time back in um, 2009, uh, so, so last year was my first race back. Um, it was a bit daunting, but uh, I managed to race for three days um, where, where I scratched on the truck, so I was pretty happy. How, you, how you, under, you undersell yeah. yourself, mate. You had a great meeting there in Adelaide. It was a great return. Thank you, very appreciate it. Uh, do, do any of our judges have a question for Matt uh, as well? Uh, if, if, if you don't, basically, I was just going to ask Matt, how is it working with an iconic brand such as Hot Wheels? And you know how kind of prestigious it is to have one of your vehicles immortalized as a Hot Wheel. Do you do you have any personal ones for any of the fans out there? Um, maybe sitting on your desk because I'm seeing the Camaro behind you, but uh, he's searching around. I, th- I think your son stole it. I, I think, I, yeah, I think he stole it. <laughs> But uh, how, uh, how look to be um, partner with Hot Wheels is a dream come true. Um, I absolutely I love Hot Wheels. I always have loved Hot Wheels. We go hand in hand. I, I always say, what does a kid do when they get a car or a, a truck in, the, in their hand or a motorbike in their hand? They do wheel stands and jumps and burnouts, and that's exactly what we do. 
So um, to me, to be wrapped up with a brand is unreal. And like I said, I've been with them about seven years now, and it just gets stronger and stronger and stronger. I mean, we're more wanted by both runners and fans, and my fan base is growing by the by the ton every second. So um, yeah, we love it. We, we love the brand, and um, my little boy, my little girl is um, little girl's now three years old. Her name's um, Zali Danger. Um, oh, here we go. And there it is. There it is. I told you he stole it. Yeah, mega. Yeah. Very cool. I have a uh, car, my own car, made up with me on the front. Um, yeah, absolute pleasure. Worldwide distributions. So I was, was pretty great for that. We've got, only got a handful left, and I'm keeping them in mind. <laughs> <laughs> Again, don't let your don't let your son or uh, you know your growing daughter here. She's gonna you want to keep those around as heirlooms because you are an absolute legend. Thank you so much, Matt, for uh, not only being with us today but also just how you inspire people. Right, Rusty? Yeah. That's that, that's what you said. Yeah, thank you, Matt, for representing Hot Wheels over there in Australia, for sure. No, my, my, my pleasure. Very cool. And cool hats off to you guys, you judging guys. I mean, watching the, the telecast and the top 10 uh, cars that you pick, it's a bloody hard job. So, very cool hats off to you guys. It's um, very some, some, some very cool cars in there. But I've got to say, I'm a big fan of that Escort. So, oh, man. Good. <laughs> very cool. <laughs> you and everybody yeah. else. Hey, thank you so much again. Thank you so much, Matt McGay, and uh, and all that you do. So thank you for joining us here. Matt McGay signing off. That. Absolute you, legend. Man. All right. So again, uh, speaking of legend, thank you to our retail partner, Big W. Go to bigw.com.au to pick up all of your Hot Wheels. If you're looking for Hot Wheels diecast, that's where you can go to bigw.com and .au. So as uh, we are getting ready to announce, there you go. You can see the website right there. And uh, that's where you're going to find them. Scotty, if you're looking for some more. Mrs. Taylor, that's where you can find some for little Scotty. Hey, uh, just all the judges, thank you guys and gals. So uh, the envelope, please, if I may, go ahead. Oh, look at that. Ooh, we got the gold <laughs> envelope here. Who is the nice. winner of Hot Wheels Legends Australia? And the winner is... The 1974 Ford Escort, Shannon yeah. Harad, and, uh, and, and Shan Shannon is in is in the chat. So congratulations, Shannon. It says it right there. And uh, yeah, absolutely, congratulations. So uh, Scott, I'm going to you, man. Uh, just overall, how cool is it that this vehicle wins? It will be going to the grand finale in Los Angeles in November for a chance to have their vehicle immortalized as an iconic Hot Wheels diecast vehicle, Scott. Mate, it is absolutely cool, especially from the perspective of, you know, Street Machine being the media partner here. I mean, this car was a cover car of Street Machine magazine. So if we can get a, a cover car from Street Machine as a Hot Wheels car, that would be fantastic. I mean, it's and it really it is of a perfect car. Yeah, uh, uh, Jess, Jess, going to you. I mean, you talked about the color, the green. It's on your BMX bike. Uh, does this does this embody Australia? It does embody Australia, and I'm super happy that it's coming to the States to represent us. I think this thing is unbelievable, so I couldn't be happier. Molly, how has this experience been being part of this? Guess what? You also get to get out of quarantine. Congratulations on your Extreme E. <laughs> Thank you for joining us here, but this whole experience. Have you had fun? Yeah, I've had a blast and, um, you know, just really excited to be a part of it. And it's been so exciting to see all the diversity of the cars and, and just really see some, you know, you, we know we've got a fantastic car culture here in Australia, but you know, through this experience, I'm seeing all these these cars that I've never seen before. So it's been a really, really cool thing. And I uh, look forward to hopefully seeing them somewhere at some race meet doing something in the future. I love it, I love it. And Rusty, going to you, you've probably announced every single car race with every single vehicle here down under New Zealand and talk, but, but just overall being part of this, we're absolutely making history. Oh, I'm super uh, proud to be part of it. Can we just say to everybody else that entered and even to whittle it down to that top 10, uh, congratulations to those that made the top 10. And we hope this is a bit of inspiration for those in the Aussie car community to enter the next Hot Wheels Legends. Get amongst it. And the car, the winner here tonight, it's very hard in the amazing Hot Wheels range to have a standout because there's so many good cars. But how cool is that for Australia? That car, that's, that's a great representation for all sorts of reasons. 
Yeah, congratulations to Shannon. So uh, I'm going to end with our two designers, but here is the trophy again, designed in El Segundo. The trophy right here, obviously with that iconic vehicle that is the Twin Mill. But uh, speaking of designed, let's uh, end. Dwayne, uh, how, how was your experience here this evening Repre uh, talking about Australian vehicles? Oh, it's always awesome. I wish we could really go to Australia. That would be a lot more <laughs> yeah. impressive. But anyways, this is cool to get to uh, get to know other other people in the car community and, and see the cars that uh, are over there, you know, even though we don't get to travel over there this time. Yeah, I get it. I get it. This is definitely a hot rod. Brendan, ending with you, bud. Yeah, echoing what Dwayne just said. I mean, we've been doing this now. This is our fourth year of the Legends event. And you know, it was just the U.S. and we've been able to expand. So to see the, the cars in Australia, it's just really like an honor, really. I mean, it's it's so mm -hmm. eye-opening and we're always learning and, and stuff. So it's so cool to see the different things that represent the cars in Australia because, you know, we're all passionate about cars at the end of the day. And it's just cool to see it from, you know, a different perspective, a different, you know, set of eyes culture and, and all that and it just it's just so cool so i'm i'm honored to be a part of it and that's one of the reasons i was signing up for the australia event is, is i just want to be a part of that because guess what brandon you're going to australia next year no i'm joking i'm joking, <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Dwayne, you have to stay at home brandon's hey, going by hey, himself we gotta get some for staying up at one in the morning right <laughs> hey it's all good i'm ready to party man we're, and this where, is an where absolute where do we I was get just what? Gonna ask, where do we get one of Matt's uh, shirts? You know that that yellow shirt with the stars and stripes. I would right? love oh, yeah. one of those. I, I know that a guy. Cool. I got. I, I know a okay. guy. All right. So uh, it's right next to the Hot Wheels that he couldn't find. Right. So uh, we'll see if we can <laughs> yeah. find more of those shirts. On behalf of Hot Wheels, thank you so much. But guess what? We're doing this again. So thanks for taking time this evening because the Legends Tour continues next week with the first U.S. and Canada show next Thursday, the 29th at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. All be your host i'll be back here again tune in you're going to want to find out our special guest thank you so much check hot wheels official on ig on facebook to learn more thank you so much brendan Dwayne, jess molly rusty yeah, scott matt mcgay i'm jared dienda thank you so much we'll see you online or we'll see you another time send it hot wheels nation right. hot wheels legends thank australia you. 2021 is a wrap congratulations to the 74 ford escort